<laughs> Welcome to English Country Life. This is one part of our series on reducing our household bills. Our friends and neighbours really help us to achieve that goal. So let us show you how they help us. Hello, welcome to English Country Life. My name's Hugh. And my name's Fiona. And today we want to talk to you about something that we've come to call loosely the Rural Support Network. Years ago there was an expression of, it takes a village to raise a child. And we kind of adapt that to think, it takes a community to be self-reliant. And that seems like a contradiction in terms, but I promise you that it isn't. Villages came to exist because Sometimes you need to share skills. You can't be an expert in everything. And years ago, a village would have one blacksmith who did the smithying work and often the farrier work for the whole community. And what we've come to learn is we've tried to do more and more and more for ourselves is you can't have every skill you might occasionally need and every piece of equipment you might occasionally need. But by sharing and cooperating with your friends and neighbours, you really can have access to those things and those skills. We've got some wonderful friends and neighbours who support us. So let us tell you a little story of the support that we get. So let's get started. At its heart, this is a story about relationships. And I'm going to be straight with you. Fiona is much better at forming relationships with new people than I am. I'm a bit shy and awkward, as you can probably tell. When we moved in here, Fiona said, look, we've really got to get to know the neighbours. And yeah, absolutely, that's right. So what we did is I baked a load of cakes. And rather than have the normal awkward doorstep conversation and handshakes, around about Christmas, we took a cake to each of the neighbours, and I'll show you a picture of what they look like. And I said, look, hi, we're here, Fiona, we've just moved in over there. And we've made a real effort to get to know these guys. So Fiona's on the parish council. I produce a lot of seed for the vegetables that we grow, so I'll give that away to a lot of the neighbours for their vegetable gardens. We'll have the occasional summer barbecue where what we actually give people to eat is all the things we produce and they get to know us and understand what we're about and that pays off in some really unexpected ways. And today we want to talk to you about just one example. One of the first things that came about from those relationships was we got a call from one of the neighbours. Now he was having some tree surgery work done and the tree surgeon he was using mentioned he was having difficulty disposing of the excess wood chip that he got from all of the jobs. Now our neighbour had no use for the wood chip at the time but he knew that we use it all over the property. We use it as paths down the side of the house. We use it as a mulch on our herb beds and other vegetable and fruit beds. And we also use it at the moment as a floor covering within the fully netted enclosure that the chickens have to be in while we're under the avian influenza restrictions. Without it, that floor would just turn to mud very quickly. Now we learned that the tree surgeon absolutely loves fruit and vegetables. He's actually vegetarian. So when we harvest our fruit and veg, we give him some of the preserved produce. And let me tell you, that man can practically inhale dried raspberries and dried apples. So it's turned out to be a very advantageous relationship because this stuff is invaluable to us. As we built a relationship with our tree surgeon friend, it turned out that there are times when he wants to get rid of logs. He's felled out, he hasn't got a use for them at the moment, he's local to us, and he really just wants them off his wagon so he can get on with some more work. Well, I was kind of bowled over, it's like, yes, 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 please. I offered to pay him for some of the wood. He said, no, no, I just need rid of it at certain times. So we said, absolutely, please come, bring it, drop it in our wood yard. And that's what he does. And it's tremendous to us, really reduces our heating bills. But of course, our part of that deal is when he needs his wagon empty, he needs it empty now and we have to take it. And that's great. And that's what we do. But of course, this wood is fresh. I mean, it doesn't get any fresher. You know, three days ago, it was upright. So what we have to do now is cut it up and split it and season it. That gave us a bit of a problem. We do have wood drying facilities, but not enough. So we had to think of a creative way of seasoning and drying this wood. And it needs drying really for two years before we burn it.
In one of the conversations with some of our neighbours, we mentioned this problem to them. So we were just sat having a few beers one evening and we said, we need containers to season our wood. But we didn't know what to do because we have all the space to put containers, but nothing to put the wood in. And they suggested another neighbour who lives just a little bit further away. And he's a farmer and he farms vegetables. Now vegetables go into giant wooden crates, but over time they become damaged or they start to degrade a little bit and he needs re rid of all of his old crates. Now they're good enough for us to put wood in to season, even if they're not good enough to transport vegetables. So we found ourselves a few days later with all of these fantastic wooden crates and look at it now, we've got lots of places to put the wood for seasoning. You might be wondering what on earth I'm doing with this plant. Well, black currants can easily be led and propagated. All I need to do is scratch a little bit of this bark, pin it down to the soil, and that creates roots over time, creating a brand new plant. I can then separate it and pot it on. What's that got to do with our story? Well, it's actually quite simple because the farmer friend who brought us these vegetable crates mentioned to us that his wife grows a lot of their own fruit and vegetable at their home, but they don't have black currants and they don't have gooseberries and gooseberries can be layered and propagated in the same way. So all we did was layer some of these down, propagate some new plants for them and we took around black currants and gooseberries for them to grow. Can't tell you how grateful they were but this is how the cycle works. Other people have things which we need here, we have things which they need too and the cycle just works brilliantly. crates and they are great for keeping the wood up off the ground which stops it soaking up more moisture. They're slatted so the wind can blow through and that can help dry the wood. But what they are is open to the elements and the rain will keep wetting the wood and that's not great. Now when we restored one of the barns what we did was we used a product that I would call Wriggly Tin. I'm sure it's probably got a proper name but that's what I call it. And we had some offcuts and I used that to cover some of the crates. But I didn't have enough for all the crates and we're constantly adding to our crates and our storage. Now that's when the rural network kicked in again. There's a fantastic local chap who fixes our machinery for us. When the throttle assembly went on my rotavator, he came, collected it, took it away, fixed it, brought it back. And on one of his visits, he noticed that we had chickens and he, he said, are they buff orpingtons? We were like, yeah, yeah, they are. Come and have a look. So took him for a tour and he mentioned that his wife loves buff orpingtons, would love to have some. So Fiona was like, well, bring her around. Come on, she can come and have a look. No obligation brought his wife around, who's a lovely, lovely lady. She was enthused, ended up with some of our hens. But as we were having a cup of tea and talking, the conversation turned to the Wrigley Tin. And the guy mentioned that he had some of it. Well, Rural Network kicked in again. And he was kind enough, not only to let us have some, but to bring it round in his van, because it's big, awkward stuff to move. And we ended up with some more sheets to cover our crates. We've used the phrase rural network, but it's just a phrase. And I'm quite sure that anyone can establish a similar network of friends and neighbors, whether they live in a town or a city. And it's not just about firewood. Here's another example. This is something that we have. It's called a post rammer. It's used for knocking in fence posts and tree stakes, etc. And there are other weird and wonderful bits of equipment. This strange looking device is a wire stretcher and it's used for tensioning things like fence wire and barbed wire. They're wonderful, useful bits of kit and they really do keep the cost down of rural living, but they're not the sort of thing you need every day. Now we've got them, we've got knowledge to use them. And when our friends and neighbors want them, they either borrow the equipment if they know how to use them or we'll give them a hand and in return they give us a hand with other jobs or lend us the equipment that they have. That's just an example it's not everything and we're happy to talk more about how we live a self-sufficient life but what we wanted to show today is how cooperation really really helps us reduce our bills and live the way we want to live. If you have liked this content, take a moment and give us a thumbs up down below. If you're not already a subscriber to the channel, hit subscribe and the bell icon and you'll be notified of every new video as soon as it goes live. If you do want to talk to us about this content or have any ideas for any other content, leave it in the comment section down below and we'll see what we can do in terms of making that video or if it's a question, we'll get back to you as soon as possible. But for now, thanks for watching and we look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.